Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to the Shed House. Today we're going to be working on a mug, coffee cup, mug, tumbler. This is a 12 ounce and I have spray painted it kind of uh, splotchy and just random orange and black. And I purposely did the speckles just for effect. What we're going to do is um, some time back and I'll try to link the video that I did um, with foils. Um, it seems since then foils have really taken hold and a lot of people are doing them. So I thought, well, I'll dig out my foils and I'm going to do another foil piece. So what I've chosen for my foil is a leopard print. Let me just stand that up there. And I'm thinking that this is, this is going to be okay on this, on this mug. And I'm just going to put random spots of tacket into the orange but not covering the orange but just into the orange and then you'll see what I'm going to do. So that's that's my plans for starters. This is my tacket that I keep in this bowl and I've added more tacket into it and I'm going to show you the the tacket is uh, Aileen's tacket over and over and you can you can thin it out or you can use it straight however you want to do it um, like I said I added more in here this is normally my 70 30 ratio of tacket to water but I want it to be a little bit thicker in order to work with my foils the last one that I did with the foils I used Elizabeth's um, it's sticky it's like a glue paper and it worked but man it was sticky it, so I think it was a little too much it was overkill I'm gonna use this ratty old paintbrush and I'm probably going to use this fan brush to give myself some some uh, trailing or whatever to make it look like a rough edge on it. Hopefully that works. So we're just going to get started here. And uh, let me see. Let me get a piece that I can. There we go. And I'm just going to lay it on here. And then... Get a little bit of it onto this. I don't want a ton of it. And kind of draw it out. I want it to look kind of torn and ragged. There. I don't think I want that over there. And I'm just going to work between the two, the two brushes. And that's all I'm going to do on there. I don't want it overdone. Just as accents. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and dry this up with the heat gun. Just quick fast. I'm going to do this kind of randomly on here. Oops, don't lay that on there. And I'm going to just rub, and that's what we have. Let's put this right on the handle. 
and we're just going to rub it out there, pull it up, and we have, oh, there's still a little spot of sticky there. There. Just enough to accent it. That's... Cute. So cute. Okay, I think I'm I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this epoxied and we'll be back for the mattifying and I'm going to reveal a little secret that I found out about making this matte. So stay tuned. We will return shortly. I know this looks different than it did the last time you saw it. Um, there's actually um, three coats of epoxy over top of our foil designs. And I don't know if you can see the foil design right in there. A little bit of it sticking out. But you do see that I put vinyl on here and I did random cuts throughout um, just to see what I like better because... What I did is I painstakingly <laughs> cut pieces of vinyl and then I cut into them and snipped and da, 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 and then stuck them on here because I didn't have definite shapes and I really didn't want definite shapes on here. So I went ahead and just cut them and stuck them on here just as I wanted to. And so the main point of this was to be able to show you that you can use a typical product that many of us have in our home. Now, I'm not going to say everybody because not everybody runs the same kind of equipment in their home. Um, so anyway, I have a glass top stove. And because I do, anybody who has a glass top stove, you know that there are certain things that you have to do to keep it looking nice. Um, a product that I use, this Ceramabrite cooktop cleaner, this stuff works great as a mattifier. So I'm going to show you how. This was like maybe, it wasn't quite $3, I don't think, at Lowe's, but it's available. It's just readily available if you have a Lowe's, um, and they probably have it like at Walmart or Target or whatever like that. Um, I'm not sure if all of them work this way, but I know this one does. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I have my ratty uh, scotch bright pad that I have used several, several times. And because it still works really well for me, I'm using it. I'm going to spray my cup after I put a little spot of this on. I'm going to spray my cup just a couple of spritzes of water. And this stuff, if you've ever used it, you know you need to shake it up because it does have a certain amount of grit that will go to the bottom. You want that grit mixed in. And that being said, here we go. Just a little bit of it. Tiny spritz of water little bit of spritz on my on my scrubby I gotta get this in my hand the right way here and you're just gonna start going around in circles and it does work really well now when I when I did this before I had smooth like this um, vinyls but to get into these little cracks and crevices and little points, I'm coming from the vinyl out to the cup. And then I'm going to kind of give it a little um, circular motion 
so that I don't have straight lines of scrapes and scratches and, and whatnot. And it doesn't take a lot to do this. When I discovered it, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. I know a lot of people like to use, um, I think it's Barkeeper's Friend and Sand and Seal to do this, but those are, those are more expensive. You have to, you know, I looked at my local Lowe's for the Barkeeper's Friend and didn't find it. <clears throat> so when I decided to try this, and I saw that I got the results that I wanted. And it's so smooth afterwards. I mean, it is baby butt smooth. And I probably shouldn't have done all these little points. Because, well, hindsight, you know. You don't get in there as, as easily, but... If you're going to cut something on your Cricut machine, you're probably not going to cut anything like this anyway. You know, it's probably going to be more of a, a smoothed out. A lot of people do the leopard print. Okay, I'm going to just quick spritz this to see where we're at. And I've already done half the cup in that little bit of time. I'm not going to do the handle. I don't want the handle to be to be the matte finish. But, and I know you typically do this on black, but I did it on a cup that I did metallic paints on. And it came out just fine. Now, I'm going to, I'm just going to swipe down a little bit of it to see where we're sitting. Aha. Uh -huh. And we do have our matte finish. Now, if you look at that right here where I cleaned up, there, that's cleaned off. And you look at that. That's a big difference. It's a big difference and it really does look good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it off. Um, I'll do it in high speed. But then once I rinse it, I'll come back and we'll peel the stickers off. And we'll see just exactly how well it works. You know, it, it's probably not the end all to beat all. But... In a pinch, I don't think it's a terrible way to do things. So I'm going to go back, back in here. I think I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to go and rinse this off. And then when we come back, I will peel our stickers and see where we're at. I'll be right back. Okay. Barely a minute later, I'm back. And as you can see, you can start to see the, uh, the mattifier throughout the cup where I where the water has dripped off. Now I'm I'm almost thinking the bottom isn't quite where it needs to be. But well, it's not bad. It's pretty much there. Um as with any of the scrubs that you use to do this method, there are times when you do have to go back over a certain section to um 
you know, to ensure that, that the effect that you were looking for is there. But for the most part, see, there's a little, it's a little shiny up there, a little shiny around there. Not a big deal. Not for, not for demonstration purposes anyway. Okay. We're dried off. So now we're going to peel these stickers and they're over top of our foils because I wanted the foils to shine. So I'm going to get my X-Acto blade here and I'm going to set it down here so that I can work a little more efficiently. And I'm going to struggle <laughs> because this is like a peekaboo, and peekaboos are not my favorite thing to do. Okay, you get over there. But I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised, and you may be able to save yourself a little bit of money and the wait time to get those other products in. Am I saying that this is just as good? Um, can't tell you that. I gotta take my glove off because there's no way I can do that. Um, because I haven't used them. Because frankly, I just felt like they were a bit expensive. For something we were just gonna swipe on and, and get rid of. Yes, I'm wasting vinyl. It's vinyl that was in my scrap pile. So, yeah, I don't care about that. And then, of course, we can clean up any of the residual stickiness from the vinyl with alcohol. And that won't affect our matte finish. Now I'm going to use my my alcohol and I'm going to spray it on and clean up those sticky spots because there's quite a few of them. All right. Well, what do you think? How do you think my uh experiment went? I think I need a little better light on this. Let me see if I can't maneuver this around a little bit. I've got my my ring light here. See if that there you go. See you can see shiny and matte and shiny. I know the ring light is in the way, but you can see the cup. But, yeah, so, you know, you want to take a little more time than I did. I kind of rushed through it just so that I could show you what was what, but I think it did okay. I don't think I'm dissatisfied with it. So, let me know what you think in the comments if you have if you have a, a a hack that you've discovered I'd I'd love to know about it and I'm sure other tumbler makers would as well but um yeah so this is where we are with this I still have a little more cleanup to do I've got I still got some more sticky stuff on here but um yeah that's going to pretty much close out our tutorial and our little 
extra hack, our mattifying hack. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, would love it if you would. Just join us here at the, the Shed House and join me, Sandy, the Shed House Wrap. Um, we're going to be doing our giveaway pretty soon. So I need, I need help from my other YouTube, um, viewers or uh, viewers, uh, creators. I need to know how to do the wheel, the name pick wheel. And I think it has something to do with, with YouTube, but I haven't figured it out. Um, if anybody could give me a, a little clue on how to do that or where to get that. I mean, I know I can do it separately and then I'd have to set up my laptop and, and all that. But I don't know how to get all of the names of my subscribers out of my whatever studio, wherever it's kept. Um, so if you could let me know that, I would really appreciate it. And we're going to be talking about the giveaway that, and it's not this, unless this was something that you wanted, but um, it's not this. I'll let you know how we're going to do that. But I do need to know how to do that name pick wheel. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps someone in the long run here and um, try it. What can it hurt to try it? Because you know what? If this didn't turn out, I can throw it right back on the turner re-epoxy it, and either redo it again or live with it the way it is. So, give it a try. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for watching. Hope I helped somebody. And until next time, toodles!